welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. Today we're going to learn how to make a simple apron. So I'm glad that you're able to join me, but I wanted to show you guys just a way to make a simple apron which would be awesome for Christmas gifts. And it only takes a yard of fabric and about seven yards of bias tape. But I have this one right here, which I did, and I also have this one right here. Both of these fabrics are outdoor fabrics. They're found in the upholstery section. They're a kind of a canvas. And I think they I didn't get the I didn't get the super fancy kind. I found both of these fabrics in I think I found them in the clearance at Joann's, but I'm not positive. Anyways, I used a coupon and got them uh, relatively cheap. But they each only take a yard and they're super simple to make. So let's go on to the video. For the apron that we're gonna make today, these are the tools that you need. You need a long ruler, pencil, paper, and I am going to show you how to copy from an apron that I already have. But even if you don't have an apron, following my directions, you can draft out your own apron. This is just a super simple apron, nothing fancy. So this apron that I have here has a bunch of sheep on it. It's the apron I picked up in Ireland when I visited Ireland a couple of years ago. So what I did is I felt, took the apron, I just wanted to take a quick look at it to see what type of things it has. So it doesn't have any pockets. There are no pockets on this apron at all. It's just the fabric and it has a bias binding around the edges. So what I'm going to do, I took my apron and I folded it in half because we're going to trace around it using the apron that I have and trace out our pattern. Okay. So I'm going to take my long ruler here and I'm going to draw a line from the top to the bottom of my paper. And this is going to be my baseline. So everything that I trace off of, all the measurements from here are going to be transferred onto the paper using this main line. So I'm just going to line up the edges so that it's straight and even. Okay, so now I'm going to take this ruler, I'm going to set it aside, right here. And so, because my apron is folded in half, we're only going to draft half the apron. So this apron right here, this line, that's going to be our fold line, which means it's going to be center front. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it. Okay. So this line right here is my fold line right here. So now I'm going to take my apron and I'm going to measure out from this line to this line. So this is going to be your neck. I'm going to measure it out. And so I have to also, because there's wrinkling going on here, see how that doesn't lay flat here in the corner? It's because the bias tape shrunk a little bit, so it pulled in the fabric. So whenever I see anything like that where it's pulling a little bit, I'm just going to straighten it out with, with my hands and get the correct measurement so that the main fabric is wrinkle free. Okay, so I'm going to round out a little bit. This one is showing me about five inches. So five inches from the top is the neck. I'm just going to make a little notation there. And from the top to the bottom of that main fold, we're going to measure that to see how long our apron's going to be.
and it's about 34 and a half inches. So even though there's wrinkling near the edges, there's no wrinkling in the middle. So from the top to the bottom of your apron should be pretty accurate. And from what my ruler is showing me, it's about 34 and a half inches. So I'm going to mark that. Okay, right here. And 34 and a half. Right there. Now, once I have that marked, if you want to make your apron shorter, that's up to you. So you can make it shorter or longer depending on how wide your paper is. Or if you want it really long, then you just tape some more paper down there and go on with that. But that's our center front, 34 and a half inches long. And we now know our neck is 5 inches out. And we also need to know the length or the width from the fold to the curve here where it would go up underneath your arms. And that's going to be uh, about 13 and a half. We'll put that right there. We'll say it's under the arm. And if you imagine a line right here, we're going to measure down from here to where that line is, where the underarm is. And see, I kind of have an indention right here where I laid my ruler. And it's about 10 inches. So I'm going to put that right here. Okay? And then we need to figure out how wide from here to here is. Oh, well, from here to here is 13 inches. And so from here all the way down to the end is going to be 13 inches as well. So those are the measurements that you need to take. You need to take your center front, where your underarm is, how wide your apron is going to be, how wide your neck is, and from the neck to where the underarm is. So this way. And those are the measurements that you need. Now that I have those measurements, I'll be able to draw it out. So, I'm going to set this aside and bring in my quilting ruler. This is one of my favorite rulers. I can see through it, and most of the time it's long enough to get everything I need in. So, I don't need a huge long ruler anymore. I'm actually going to put that one away. And I'm going to mark out using this and it has all sorts of fabulous guidelines on it so that I'll always be straight. So we're going to measure out 13 inches from our center front out because that's going to be where our, our under our arm is and the width of the rest of the pattern. Alright, so that's our width from our center front to the back. That's 13 inches around. Then we're going to go from our top and we're going to measure out 10 inches down. And because I have an inch here, I'm using the grid to mark my lines. I have an inch above the line. It'll be 11 inches on my ruler. Ten inches down. And then I'm going to mark that line that up using the grid on my ruler. So this is our underarm line and then I'm going to mark five inches from this point to this point. Okay, so this is my neck and that was five inches. We have ten inches down And that's from your neck to your underarm. And then you have your underarm, which is 13 inches wide. And that width, this gives us the rest of the apron. So right now, what we're going to do in following the shape of the apron, we are going to look at the apron again. And if we did it right, it should match up pretty well. And it matches up pretty decent. 
and we're just going to trace the shape. So this is the shape of our front and of our arm. So this is our main apron piece. So we're only going to cut one of our main apron piece. So I don't have any seam allowances because we're going to bind the edges in bias tape. So I'm going to cut this out and when I put on here, this is my apron, this is my main piece, and we're only cutting out one piece because we only need one piece. If you wanted, you could add seam allowances to it, add a half inch seam allowance all the way around it. You could cut out two pieces and then make separate strings to go around your neck and to tie in the back and then you put your right sides together sew it all around, leave a hole at the bottom, flip, press and then sew all the way around it. So you could do it that way. It'd be a little heavier but um, you could do it that way as well. But this is the way we're doing it. I'm doing it just like the apron that I have over there. So I'm going to cut this out real quick and we'll move on to the sewing. Now that I got my pattern piece cut out, this would be the time to make any type of designs that you want on it. If you want a pocket here that would go on your chest, or if you wanted a pocket here around your waist to put things in, this is where you would want to figure it out, figure out where your placement is, and figure out how you want to do that. So if you do it all here on paper first, when it comes to cutting out your fabric, you already know what you want to do, and then you can do it. I mean, I also play around with uh, maybe I want to add a pocket after I've cut the fabric out and then I can see what fits, what doesn't, how it works. And you can do that too. I'm just saying, before you start sewing your apron together, make sure you have all the pieces that you need and all the pockets or ruffles or decorations or everything done before you start putting your apron together. So, now that I have my apron, cut, uh, my apron pattern cut out, I'm going to cut it out on my fabric next. For this fabric, what I did, I found some really cute uh, upholstery fabric. So it's, this was in the upholstery section. I found this really cute upholstery fabric in at Joann's, and I only got a yard of it because I knew I'd be able to make an apron with a yard. So because my apron is 34 and a half inches long, I don't have much room for seam allowance. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want to cut my apron out right in the middle, because the fold when you purchase it is right in the middle, so I'm going to fold my edge in such a way where I'm going to fold it in half here so that I will have plenty of room. So I need to make sure it's wide enough to fit my apron, which it is. My fold is over here, so I'm going to inch it over some more so that everything fits. Now, this fabric that I have here, I did not wash. I'm just being lazy, so I haven't washed my fabric. And this will be for me anyways, or Maybe I'll give it to one of my sisters for Christmas or something like that, which in case it would still be laziness. So I'm just going to line up my pattern. And I'm holding down my pattern and I'm going to use my Sharpie marker to trace around it. And then when I go to cut it out, I'm going to cut off the Sharpie marker. So there's the outline of my apron and now I am going to pin around the edges and cut it out. So now we need to take the time and do the binding around the edges and for the neck to go around your neck and then the waist ties. But that's how you get to this point. So I'm going to go ahead and cut over and do my other one 
and then we'll sew it all together. Now that I have both my aprons cut out of the fabric, I have them set aside. So what we're going to do now, we're going to figure out how much bias tape we need and how it's applied to our apron. So when I'm looking at the apron, the first thing I notice right off is that it's done in sections. So the bias tape is done one section at a time. And it looks like the bottom is done first. So bias tape is applied on the bottom first. And then it's applied up the side. And this, oops, the straps and the neck are all one piece. Okay, I take that back. It's the bottom, the sides, and then the neck. So then the, the sides, the arms, the star arms come up around the neck. This is all one piece. So it starts from here, and this is your, your string to go around your waist, your tie, and then it goes up the side, and then it, you leave a piece, and then it comes down here, and then back out the other side for your tie. So what we're going to do is measure how much we think we're going to need. So the bias tape has shrunk a little bit, so we're going to do a little stretching see if we get it to stretch out a little bit to give us an accurate measurement of what our bias tape is going to be. we know how much bias tape we have we're also going to add maybe about three inches we're going to say plus three so that gives us so 28 plus 24 plus 10 plus 120 plus 3 is 185 inches Okay, now that I have my bias tape cut and ironed, this one was the pre-purchased bias tape. And when you pur when it's purchased, it's flat like this. So it has the two let's see, so it has the two folded edges, but I went ahead and ironed it so it has the middle edge as well. Because like I said, when you purchase it it comes like this, so I just went ahead and ironed it flat so it'll look like that. So this is the homemade bias tape that I had. It was just fabric that I cut on the bias. It was flat and I went ahead and ironed it the same way. So I folded in my two ends and then folded it in half. And I have a video regarding bias tape. I'll throw it up in the upper uh, the card on the corner. There's a couple of ways to add your bias tape to your apron. And what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna do the one step version. So normally what you would do, you would take the edge of your bias tape and you would line it up with the edge of your fabric and you would sew down that crease and then you would fold it over and sew again to hold down the opposite side. Well this time instead of doing that, I'm just going to do it all at one time. Since I have my bias tape already folded in half, it's already creased where it needs to be, all I have to do is slide the bias tape onto the edge. And then I'm going to clamp it down. I'm not going to use pins because I don't want uh, the pins aren't going to fit like I want them to. So I'm going to use these nifty clips that I have. There you go. So these are the clips and they're really awesome and you use these when you don't want to use pins. So like for fabrics like leather or vinyl or anything you don't want to leave pinholes in, you can use these. So I'm just going to slide my, my bias tape over the edges of the fabric and instead of sewing this twice, I'm only going to sew it once, right down the edge. Okay. So do you see what I did here? 
I took the bias tape and I covered the edge so that the edge is completely covered on both sides and I just clipped it down so that it'll stay where it's supposed to stay and I apologize for the lighting I don't have a whole lot of sunlight this morning so I'm going to do this for my straight edges so I'm going to do it for this side for this side and then I'm going to do the neck I'm going to sew that down and then I'm going to come back and do the bottom sew that down and then we'll do the arms and the straps at the last um, at the as the last step and then once we do the arms and the neck strap and the ties then we'll be done so I'm going to go ahead and do this and do the other one as well. I did it all in one step. I did the neckline, I did the sides, and now I'm going to do the bottom. So now that we have corners that we need to cover with our bias tape, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing except we're going to fold in our ends. So anything you have hanging left over, we're going to trim to make it even with our edge, like that, and like that. And we're going to take our end and we're going to fold it over just like maybe a quarter of an inch. We're going to fold it so that it's the tab. We have a tab. We're going to fold it over and then we're going to lay the edge of our fabric here on our bias tape. And then we're going to fold it over like this. So this right here, that folded edge, that folded corner piece, that is going to be the edge of our fabric where our corner is. So we folded it over, finger press, finger press it so it stays where it's supposed to be, and then we're just going to line it up, and it's going to cover the cut edge of the prior bias binding. Okay, so we have the folded edge folded over, and as we lay our bias binding down this edge, it's going to cover the cut part of this bias binding right here so there are no ends no cut edges showing okay now that I have that folded over edge covered the bottom of the apron folded over that edge so we have no cut edges showing I'm gonna go ahead and run a stitch all the way across here when we come back we'll finish it up by doing the arms the neck ties or the neck string and the ties and I'll show you how we're going to do that. At this point we have our sides covered in bias tape so both sides are covered in bias tape. Our neck edge is covered in bias tape and I just got through sewing the bottom edge in bias tape. And remember when you do the corners not only fold in your bias tape but also back stitch here and here at the beginning and at the end so that you have a secure stitch there so it won't unravel and come undone. So the next thing we're going to do, and this is our last step, and the whole amount to go for your, for your ties and, and your neck and your arms is 3 yards and 9 inches. So what we're going to do, when you guys get your bias tape, make sure it's 3 yards and 9 inches. Okay, so I'm going to fold this in half, just like this. I haven't stitched anything yet. This is still going to be open because we need to do our edges. So I'm going to fold it in half. Make sure everything's lined up right. And from the center, we're going to measure down 10 and 3 quarter, 10 and 3 quarter inches. Because the neck is 21 and a half inches. So we're going to measure out 10 plus a half plus a quarter. So that would be 3 quarters. So 10 and 3 quarter inches from the end of our, our fold. So we have this all laid out nice and flat matching up the ends 
and this from this point because this is where it's going to sit on our neck this loop right here ten and three quarters so these two marks right here those are going to be on the corners here because that's going to be your loop that goes around your neck to to hang off your body if you want to make it a little smaller a little shorter you can do that just make sure that it fits around your neck and and or if you make this for somebody make sure it fits around their neck but ten and three quarters from the middle down one side and just mark it on both sides so now we're gonna go ahead and do it like this okay so you see what I did here so just on this side I marked where it starts at the neck and I clipped it here to the curve and when we sew I'm gonna do the other side I'm gonna take a second and do the other side and when we sew we're gonna start here at our edge and we're gonna sew on our edge closing this up so that there's no there's no opening you so you can't open it so we're gonna stitch on the edge all the way down we're gonna stitch here we're gonna back stitch we're gonna go back and forth making a secure stitch right here and we're gonna continue going on all the way around to the other end and once you get done with the other end, do a back stitch, or you can also fold it over, you know, fold it over like this, and then fold it over like that, so the cut ends are on the inside, so it also looks pretty. And once you get all the way done, then you're done. Then you're done, and you're able Okay, there we go. Now I got both aprons done. So here's the red one. All sewn up there. Making sure that my ties are closed. That the neckband is closed. Uh oh. I gotta go back and fix that. I didn't stitch it all the way through. So I have a hole. So I'm gonna go back and stitch that. And make sure there's that you're stitched all the way through. And there you go. So there's the first one. And here's the second one, the green one. So we're all done. Well, I hope you guys were able to enjoy the video and that you understood everything that I was trying to get to you. I also want to let you know that with Christmas rolling around, the aprons are an awesome and nifty gift for people that you love who love to cook. And you can also take the time after you cut it out and after you put your binding on, you can take the time and do some embroidery on the front or you can add pockets to it or you can embellish it in all sorts of ways that would be uh, customized to your loved one. The clips that I used right here, these are the clips that I used. These are awesome quilting clips. I can't remember what they're called, but I have them linked down in the description box below. I did not want to feel, I did not feel like pins this time around because I, I don't know. Here lately, me and pins don't get along. Thankfully, I have these clips, these awesome clips. So if you're interested in them, there's a link below. You can follow it through, and if you want to purchase, awesome. I'm glad I was able to help you out. Now, just an FYI, everything that I have listed below, I do get a small commission out of, and I would love it if you guys 
would use those links if you're going to go through um, the Amazon purchases for Christmas. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any ideas that you guys want to share with me, throw them down in the description box below. I always respond to them as quickly as I can as soon as I'm aware, um, as soon as I'm aware of them. And I would love it if you would share this video with all your friends and family. Like I said, you guys could get together and do this together as a group, or if you want to do it by yourself, that's cool. Everything will be listed in the front of the video so that you will have your supplies. And if you have pictures, I would love to see your pictures. You can post them on Instagram, hashtag Mrs. G Sewing Space, or I have a Facebook page, Mrs. G Sews. And you can upload videos, uh, not videos, pictures. You guys can upload vi uh, pictures there and allow me to see what you guys are making, share it with anybody else. I just recently got my first one, first picture, thank you, uh, regarding a chapstick key ring, which was pretty awesome. I will see you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas.